Hello, and welcome to the Rummaging Ferret. Usually, I use different size sketchbooks. This is the one I keep at home. Um, but usually I keep this in my back pocket at work. As you can tell, it's like bowed like, <laughs> from being in my back pocket. Um, so usually I'll sketch in this one, you know, like that. Um, on my lunch break or if I gotta take um, notes for what I'm working on at work um, I keep that in here as well um, and then I also keep another sketchbook in my car for if I forget that one um, but I just wanted to show you what I'm used to sketching in which is like that size versus this size so um, this one is a Canson Mixed Media, uh, and this is 9 by 12 So, I mean, that's quite a bit bigger than what I'm, you know, like, used to. So, <laughs> I think Elo sketchbooks that um, some of the artists use are probably about, you know, like that big. Because they're kind of squarish. So about that big, maybe a little bit bigger, slightly. Um, but this is what we're going to use today. I figured this might be a great time, come to think of it, to use the watercolor sets that I have never used and want to use. Um, I bought them a while back. They've traveled with me a little bit from place to place, but I've never had a chance to use them. Um, because I've always been doing larger, more, you know, prints for family and things like that that are going to be, that need to be like fast and archival. So this is going to be in my sketchbook, no daylight, none of that. We're going to be using these. Now these are perma watercolor sets. Um, this one's their woodland ones, so you got, um... Sand Ridge, Shadow, Cavern, Foxberry Pond, Stream, Bear, Mist, Greystone, Daylight, Redwood, Deep Moss. I've also got their Tropicals here. Um, I don't think these have names. There's no names on the cards. Um, but this is just their Tropical Collection. They come in these really nifty little tins. that pops out. Um, I might do a review for these another time, but for now. Um, and these are all half pans. And these are pastel dreams. Um, once again, these have no, na uh, no um, names on them, just the numbers. Arteza water pens, or water paintbrushes. You squeeze here and the water comes through out here. And I need to fill this one. Um, but you fill this with water, and then you just pop it in once it's full, and you're good to go. So I really kind of don't know what to draw, and sometimes when you don't know what to draw, um, you just kind of start using colors or shapes, or just start painting and see about something coming up. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just do like a scribble and then try to make something out of it. Um, like for this I see like a great white shark. Yeah, it's kind of like what you used to do, you know, cloud watching as kids. And sometimes you get some pretty funny looking um, drawings out of that. It should be further back. And this is just kind of to warm up and to get your juices flowing. Um, this is an eraser shield. I use these all the time to help me get into nooks and crannies where I want to keep a line that's nearby, but I want to get rid of the line that maybe that line crosses over. So like here, um, you can see where one line crosses over a line I want to keep. So I use this to protect 
the line I want and give me space to get rid of the line I don't want. And it really kind of helps you get into all these nooks and crannies. I think I can find one that works for that spot. Um, also too, when you're drafting, you can see like a dotted line on this. So like if you're doing architecture and you're doing drafting and you're doing like a floor plan or something where a line is partially obscured or hidden, you can use that. So like if I've got a line there, it's not the straightest line in the world. Hopefully it'll get the point across. I put the dotted lines over top of that line. And you erase like that. And then it gives you a dotted line. Or like a broken line. Um, so that way you can use it in architectural documents to show perhaps something behind something else. I'm gonna actually draw my original character, Gigi. How I'm gonna draw her, but we're gonna figure it out. So we're just gonna sketch her really quick and try to find like body pose. And try not to spend too much time on these, because the thing is, you, it's it's all about iteration, and you're gonna be reiterating things a lot, because um, you're not gonna be happy with your first results pretty much ever. I get stumped sometimes when I just start drawing heads. Um, so maybe the best thing to start off with is a line. Um, kind of like what we did with the shark was just a scribble. So maybe sometimes drawing a line can maybe lead to something else. Um, like a cooler pose or something a bit more dynamic. Because like a head, you don't really, you're just starting somewhere. You're not really giving a sort of dynamic feel to it. Um, so maybe... Gigi's a cat girl, so we gotta have a tail. that seem off but she is like bending over backwards kind of doing I guess like a somersault mm. somersault reminds me of like a circus Maybe instead of that, you ever go see Cirque du Soleil and you see like a hoop dancer where the hoop is tethered to the ceiling. Um, so we got one leg there that goes up. So maybe her other leg, her knee hits the rim here and kind of drapes down a little bit um, and then this one's braced up against the end of the hoop here and her leg kind of snaps back at the kneecap here so it kind of goes into a almost like the front part of a K a little bit back part of a kit? Okay. Okay, it's like that. So it'd be like a very slight version of this. So it's just kind of like ever so slightly bent backwards at the knee. Um, which your legs do do that, believe it or not. Maybe not my legs, but other people that I know can do that. Um, that are highly flexible people. Um, kind of push back at the knee just, just a little bit. It's not anything dramatic. Um, here. So she's laying there, her hips are kind of here, and then her stomach, and then got her chest, 
month or so. Still seems really thick. She's not a big girl. Mm. Ah, maybe. Alright. It's just a sketchbook, doesn't have to be perfect. What to do with her arms? Your foot kinda sticks out like that. It's not gonna drape straight down. And that's, that feels off uh, proportion-wise. These feel very off, so I'll go back and I'll fix the proportion of those later. We're just kind of doing... Maybe I should put her hands here, resting on her stomach or her lower chest. Childlike face or cat face, where it's very kind of squat. Um, ears. Tail comes over the rim. feel wrong. So the tail needs to be so this is um, too long. It needs to be shorter. Um, same thing with the legs. Proportion to that is off. Um, my ring of course is not circular. falling into a previously erased lens because like I said I do push down on my pencil fairly hard and so when I draw it creates a groove into the paper and that used to help me when I was younger um, to trace something over I would just press down really hard and then if I erased it I could still see it you know um, there we go, we've got our hoop now. So we want to work on the proportions of this to be a bit better. This is going to be fairly small, so there's not going to be a ton of detail. So the bulk of her weight is probably going to be just underneath the center point. Um, that's probably not completely center, but uh, we're going to draw it there anyways. This is just so we can get better. Um, when you're sketching, you don't have to be perfect, um, but learn from the mistakes you do make. It takes a lot of time to go back and fix mistakes, so sometimes it's better instead of trying to fix all your mistakes to just learn from the process and move on to the next thing and do it better next time. And that's a really hard lesson that I've had to learn. Um, both in my art and trying to do architecture and everything like that. Um, one of my professors, long, long time ago, for um, architectural documents, um, it wasn't even a documents class, it was basically like an architectural drawing class, which isn't just documents, it's learning how to do basically like the portraits of your building and learning different styles of medium and how what best suits you kind of thing, and that was a class I really missed. I took that at a community college um, back in Florida, and one of the things he said is do everything the same stage kind of thing. Um, not his exact words, but basically what he meant is bring everything up to speed together. Don't start doing fine details in one area and, you know, spend way too much time on it, you know, work on the drawing as a whole, you know, so you want to just refine everything kind of as you go, 
um, instead of wasting so much time doing details of one area just to find out that, like, oh, hey, your neck should be shorter than that, and you've got an elongated head, um, an elongated neck, when realistically your head should be down. So let's say um, I draw something like this, and the neck's, like, way too big. Um, let's make it longer, just to get our point across. So, let's say I do that, and this is a full body image, so I go through and I draw the entire body, right? Um, I spend a lot of time on the head and the face, and let's say I get the face completely flushed out. And I've got shading on it, I've got a nose, I've got, you know, I've figured out the hair that I want them to have. And let's say I get so far and so depth that the, the face is almost done. And then let's say I get up, get a drink, go to the restroom, come back, and then I realize how long that neck is. And I've already got, like, a shirt done with some details in it, but not, I mean, if, if I'm looking at that and I've done the head, yeah, it's like, oh man, that neck's like super bugging me, but I've already done everything to the head. And so then what, I got to erase all of this, the rest of the body to shrink it up to be up here so that the shoulders are now properly placed here instead of the shoulders being down here. So it's better to get, say, the, the skeleton down before you realize, oh, something's like horribly wrong. And maybe like that pose isn't working for you, but you've got the head, so now you're gonna alter the body and then it's just gonna look weird because you never changed how the head looks. So let's say you want them looking over their shoulder now but you've already got the head done, you know? So just like work on everything kind of simultaneously together and then bring everything up to the next grade, the next level as you go. Um, and I, I usually don't follow that advice. I should, I need, I try, <laughs> let's put it that way. I try to follow that advice. Um, it sometimes works better than others. Let's see here, on a regular human being, head is here, your neck is kind of on the shoulder side there, and then you've got your chest and your rib cage. there, you've got your sort of six pack area that overlaps with your hips, so your shoulders or your elbow comes to just under, for women, it's your, your chest. So where your chest kind of ends, or at least where mine is, where your, um, is about where your forearm's gonna be. So that's gonna be about that length. And then usually, like, the edge of your hips is a about where your wrist is, and then kind of there for your hands. So the edge of your chest is here, kind of lines up with the elbow. goes like that. Alright, so that's that kind of portion. Where do your knees come to? So your knees, if you fold your knees, they come up to kind of like your armpit area. So your leg pivots at your hip. So this part needs to kind of be the same distance your shoulder, well, like your armpit. So that is the distance for your leg. I take that, put that down here. 
it's been a while since I've, I've drawn. I gotta remember human proportions. <laughs> so these two lines should be pretty close to the same. Um, and this is not, everybody's built a little bit differently, but just so I can figure that out. So you see how that proportion, which goes from your hip to your knee, is way off here. So like, it's supposed to go from your hip to your armpit. So here's her armpit. And here's her hip. So you see how short that is compared to how long her leg is? So her leg comes from, there's her hip to her knee. See how much longer that is? And that's your proportion. So this needs to change. This is way too long. Um, so it needs to be that length. So it should be probably about there. So that, Ooh, busting out the paints, just to highlight stuff. And it's a water brush, already has the water in it. So I'm just gonna dab some on there, swish it around. So that's where her, that is bright. Okay, that's cool though. I like that color. That's a tropical orange. Um, what I'll do is I'll do, So that green is where her knee used to come to and the correct portion would be the orange. So you see how much farther that is distance wise? Back, lower back, there. This is her groin and her upper leg. So that means her butt's right there, her lower back here, and then go on her stomach here, and then rib cage there. It feels a little off, so it feels like that needs to shrink in a bit. If you got trouble with proportions and stuff, go and practice, like, get the Pinterest app on your phone. I love Pinterest. It's like the best thing for anything. Um, Pinterest is um, go on Pinterest and find just group pictures of people just hanging out. So group chill, you know, kind of pictures. And then what you're gonna do is you can practice posing from there. Cause that gives you a lot of poses in one shot and you can pick, instead of scrolling through hundreds of poses, usually one group shot will have what you're looking for and you can pick one of the poses out of that group of people. Um, I did that for hand practice. Like I practiced hands at one point and I just, it was a wedding photo where everybody was kind of hanging out and talking and everybody was kind of looking up at the camera. And um, a lot of people were like cheering the couple on kind of thing. I just went through and I drew every hand in that, that picture just to get the idea of posing. Um, okay, so from her hip to her armpit, which will be there. So you want that length here. And that's pretty close, yeah. It's just a sketchbook. We ain't reaching for the stars, but we want it to look good to us, you know. So maybe instead of having it that far out. I think all I did was make the hoop bigger and I didn't actually draw her any larger. <laughs> oh well, we're gonna keep going. Um, so maybe I will have her knee bent a little bit. So for your lower knee, your heel sits just as equal 
with your butt. So from the distance from your knee to your butt should be about the same. So your foot's gonna be right around in there somewhere. So these two lines from your bum to your knee should be about even. Seems like she's not relaxing. That's not a relaxed tail. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna change that. <laughs> Your elbow, when straight, needs to be kind of just under your chest muscles. Tapers kind of over where wrist meets. Oh, there you go. I didn't draw her any bigger, <laughs> which I come to find out, but I already drew her proportions and I'm good with that. Um, so maybe like next time I'll use a smaller hoop. What I will do is I will turn her head slightly so she's not looking up. She's looking kind of out towards the viewer a bit. So like her face is like that, her chin, which she's got a short kind of squat face. She's got a cat face almost like portion wise. It's kind of a bit more squat. So like a human head, you think of like it's an oval and then you draw the chin in, right? So it makes it even longer. Well, for like children and cats, it's very squat and they're, it's more of a, a circle with a triangle on the bottom of it instead of an oval. This is a very long head. This also works for, you know, aliens, but, um, or horses, you know, like, nay. Yeah, it's a horse head. Tubular ears. Um, so we're gonna put her eyes here. Those are too close together. So on your face, typically, if you run your, put your finger on the corner of your eye, on the outside edge of your eye, like where your eye kind of comes together to that point, um, on the corner of your eye and drag it towards your ear. They kind of line up where the start of the, um, round part of your ear is. So usually your ear starts attaching itself right across from the corner of your eye straight back. So right here, like that's the corner of her eye, right? So straight back is where her ear starts and then it kind of bows up a bit and then it kind of curves back down. That's kind of a monkeyish. ish it's too wide. And you just kind of flatten out the oval shape and that's how you kind of will get your ear. Um, the wider the oval, the larger your ear is going to look. It's going to look more like a monkey ear. Like a wider O is going to make you look like you got either a different perspective on your ear or you got a big ear. And the thinner you go, you know, it's going to look more like the perspective from which you're drawing from. So like looking at your face from the front, your ear is going to be a lot more narrow than if you were to look at your face from like a, um, a side on view, you know, so your ear is going to be quite large here. Um, the other thing is too, the end of your nose where your lips sit directly underneath, that center of your face right there. If you take your finger and put your finger against that hard cartilage on the bottom of your nose and run it across your cheek to the, to the side of your head where your ear is at, those are going to line up. So the bottom of your nose above the center point of your lips, 
where that hard cartilage piece is and you roll it around the side of your face that's where your ear attaches and where your earlobe's gonna be. I'm not getting a whole lot of detail in something this tiny anyways. I should have drawn it larger but maybe I will do a finished version of this some other time. But this is just a run for my sketchbook. Now Gigi has cat ears on the top of your head. Um, there's a bit of a space because I was drawing it more like she was looking up originally so her ears, her cat ears are not in the right place. So her hair is kind of a little bit thicker. see the bar here and that's where her shoulder comes in so I'm going to erase the lines that cover the bar on her ears with my nifty little eraser shield so I think I'll give her like a really loose tank top This feels a little long at this portion, like her, where her chest sits is about there and then her groin is a little bit further down, but that seems a little wide to me. I'm not going to go back and fix it because like I said, you just don't have time to fix everything as you're working on it. You're just going to have to learn to do better in the next one. Maybe some high-waisted pants. <laughs> Day. She's got a loose and baggy tank top, so the fabric will stretch a little bit further down. We're just gonna erase some of that. There's gonna be a little bit of a buildup in the fabric on her stomach. We got those high waisted pants. And when you draw lines for clothing, try to follow like the contour of the body. So your leg is kind of thick. So if you're drawing shorts, you know, make it rounded and that'll help give it dimension because your eyes gonna read that. Just being a thick thigh, you know? 